Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to yet another Throwback Thursdays here on the Master of Hop. It's a new series where we look at old school beers or beers that are classics, beers that I revisit, or just breweries, for example, that I revisit that I haven't drunk beer from in a long time. Uh, I think the, it's a fun idea because I've been looking a lot back and trying to revisit beers, you know, old school beers or beers I loved back in the day, and it's fun to go back and see how they are now with your palates changing and with the beer industry changing and everything. So today we're looking at a brewery. We're looking at Green Flash. Green Flash was for me one of the, you know, the awesome breweries back in the day. I actually visited the brewery in 2012 with Ryan Rashan when I was in, in, in San Diego and the States. I studied there in 12, 2012. Uh, so we went there and it, you know, it, they made some great stuff. Silva Stout, I remember being really good. And was, they also did a barley wine. I just can't remember, something with Shaggy. Sleeping with Shaggy, or was that a Flemish sour? I can't remember, but Chuck Silva brewed there back then as a brewmaster. I remember he was one of the brewmasters that was really talked about back in the day. It's also Silva Stout was named after him, which was one of the first stouts I remember trading for. Uh, but there's been a lot of things happening with uh, with the uh, Green Flash. Uh, you know, a lot of people talked about decline of quality. They took over the production of Alpine. There was a lot of fuzz about that with people not really liking the stuff coming out. Alpine branded from Green Flash and whatnot. And I actually have cans of Alpine to check out as well. All these beers actually got from Beer Dome, the, the Dutch website that's been sponsoring me for quite a long time now. They got a fun selection of just like West Coast stuff. And I was like, shit, that's awesome. So we got loads of West Coast IPAs and whatnot to revisit and new ones to check out. But yeah, so um, that's also coming in the pipeline. Some, some um, yeah, Alpine. But it's the Green Flash Alpine, not brewed at the original facility in Mammoth, which I actually also visited, it was tiny. I don't know if they still produce anything from there, but that was upper echelon IPA. It was fruity, really powerfully juice. It was kind of juicy IPA before the whole West Coast or New England thing happened. Then you got like a mishmash of that and and something slightly hazy with like Haiti Topper and then you know it's just skyrocketed. So it's gonna be really fun to revisit. I mean, one of the beers is West Coast IPA, which I actually had featured on Green Flash's website back in the day. They asked me if I wanted it featured on the website because they'd like to use it for the page about the beer. So there's like about page of Green Flash West Coast IPA and then in the corner, it was the Master of Hoppus Beer Review of it where we really enjoyed it, Jakob and I, which was fucking I thought that was so fucking cool. You know, back in the day, I was like, what shit, of course you can. <laughs> so, yeah. That's one of those breweries back in the day that I thought was really awesome. Like Ballast Point as well. Some of the, like, the classic San Diego stuff, which is really cool. So it's going to be fun to revisit. I haven't had Green Flash in years. I can't remember the last time I had a Green Flash beer, specifically an IPA. All of these are IPAs. That's what they had uh, on Beer Dome. So I think we're going to start off with this one, which I think is a newer addition to their lineup. I don't remember hearing about this. I remember they did like... Remember Pallet Record? Do you guys remember that one? Like the crazy bitter IPA they did? And Rayon Burt, the, uh, the Britannomyces one, and they did like a cola with San Fuilian, and that was also just our Imperial IPA was great back in the day. So this is, uh, yeah, this is Soul Style. This is a 6.5% IPA. They do not say whether it's West Coast or not. They just say American IPA, but I'm guessing it's West Coast. I mean, it's from San Diego, and it's clear. And I have a little bit of info here on it. In terms of hops, it's hop with Citra, Simcoe, and Cascade. So, some OG hops in this one. So, let's start off with that. I mean, it looks very nice. It looks clear, lightly orange. It's got a white head. It looks like what I expect from the style. And also, one thing to note, these cans are a little more than two months old. So, they're not that fresh. But it's really hard to get stuff like this, like, really, really fresh in Europe. So, I think this was about the age we would get... West Coast IPA, the freshest when we got it here. And I remember back in the day being pissed at European brewers trying to imitate this style and not nailing it, where you compared like a uh, West Coast IPA from Green Flash to a European West Coast IPA and the two month old West Coast IPA from the state tasted better. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, let's check out Soul Style first here. So it looks nice. Aroma. Yeah, I mean, it smells very West Coast. It's very citric and lemony. It's really sweet citrus forward. Not as much grapefruit as I imagined. They say like bright citrus, 100%, and floral hops, for sure. It, yeah, th this is the only one there isn't a canned on date on, but I'm guessing they're the same age, all of them. But it smells really nice. There's a little bit of sweet malt in the back there. Man, I'm fucking, I missed West Coast IPA so much. It smells so nice. 
They're almost slightly Midwest like because it has like a little bit of a sweeter, juicier profile, but it also has what you really often associate with the West Coast IPAs, this oily citrus, like this really oily, orangey, like almost like marmalade citrus thing. It smells really good actually. Let's try it, guys. Cheers and thanks to Beer Dome for the beers. That is so fucking nostalgic. <laughs> it's so clean. You can taste that it's definitely done well in the can compared to a bottle. A bottle would not be as good as this right now, but you can also tell it's not dead fresh. It just tastes like a not as bitter West Coast IPA. I remember, I mean, it definitely got a kick of bitterness. Don't be wrong. Don't get me wrong, but. It's not like that kind of almost like raspy bitterness. Let's just see with IBU. Is there, that's all okay. 75 IBU and I'm talking about mild bitterness here. <laughs> okay. Actually, as it sits on your tongue, it is quite bitter, but yeah, it's, it's like very bright, sweet citrus and like oily citrus. There's a little bit of pine as floral notes as they say. I'm surprised how much I like this considering it's, you know, not dead fresh. It's quite nice. It's just that can with IPA it just hold up much better. And if it's been stored cold, cold shipped, all these things, then, then the beer is just going to do much better. Hint of the malt sweetness to it as well, like a bready malt sweetness or something like that. Just classic, classic drinking stuff. Yeah, that takes me back, man. So I'm going to go get some water to raise the palate, and then we're going to move on to their classic west coast ipa just get going out getting the water on the way like it was actually also soul style is also quite grapefruity and like like pithy and also a little bit piney but man i'm looking forward to this so i just when i was getting the water looked up online it's a toast from the coast it says on the can so they all have slogans ride the perfect wave of hops this is the monumental adventure hop so west coast ipa this is a quintessential you know style example I think if you think real legit awesome West Coast IPA, this has also got a packaging date with I, which I love, um, 21st of February. So again, not dead fresh, but one fun thing with this, I just looked it up on, on Untapped. So, and that's right, I remember it, they changed the beer. So I think, I, was it 2016 or maybe 2014, something like that. Uh, I did a review of the new, West Coast IPA from, uh, from from Green Flash. And I think, I yeah, I can't remember what I called the video, but apparently the original West Coast IPA from Green Flash was changed back then. Uh, holy shit, it's gonna be a bitter one. So this was made from the beginning till 2013, then they stopped, and then they brought it back in 2019 to the original recipe, so last year. So it's not too long that they've been making this. I actually wanna just quickly check out and see what I gave the like the revamp version. I just this is yeah. It says 2014 re, oops, 2014 relaunch. I didn't like it at all compared to the original. Interesting. I didn't read much the view. I should have. But this is also one where you can't find the hops. But the big difference. Also, this is this is 75 IBUs. This is 95 IBUs. This is gonna be crazy bitter. But the big difference is the color. I mean, this definitely has some caramel malt in it. Usually in my West Coast IPAs, I prefer this, so they don't get cloyingly sweet, at least nowadays. But look at that. I mean, that's like copper almost. And the head is also slightly beige on there. It looks nice, but it's much, much darker. But yeah, okay, this is hopefully gonna be a throwback. 90, I can't remember the last time I had an IPA on 95 IBUs. That's a lot, like in modern standards. I mean, 75 is even a lot. But let's check out the aroma here on the this, well, classic West Coast IPA. Oh, <laughs> yeah. This is very, very old school. There is so, man, this is so fucking nostalgic. It's, I'm so glad I started this series. This is so fun. It just takes me back. It just puts your frame of mind like 10 years back. It shoots it out of your fucking head. And I remember sitting outside of the bottle shop in Copenhagen called um, uh, Ölbutiken, drinking this in the sun. Like shit like that because they did like outside. Uh, they started doing outside pouring or like 
take away prices or drink in prices. You can drink in on that little patio outside or whatever. Or just on a bench, I think it was. But it just takes me back to that time. And it's like so much pithy grapefruit and pine, resiny, earthy, almost like oniony, garlicky. This is more bright for sure. This is more like dense and oily and like... Like really old school West Coast. Give this to a new money haze boat, bro, and they're gonna run away, man. Holy shit, that is such a big difference. But I like it. As I've said in previous reviews, I really dig West uh, New England IPAs, but fuck, I love the West Coast still and how I've missed it. Yeah, uh, again, it has more of a sweet kind of malty backbone, and it's almost like cloying, but not completely. But let's try it. Green Flash West Coast IPA for the first time in probably six, seven years. No, six years. No, it's more than that because they changed the recipe. So probably eight or nine years. Eight years. Fucking crazy. Cheers, guys. Whoa, that's bitter. Oh, I can't remember having a, a, an IPA this bitter. Like... I don't know how long, man. Holy shit. It is so crazily bitter. I like it though, but wow. 95 IBU is quite bitter beer. It's like, it's like this really, like aftertaste right now, it's like really bitter, piney, resiny uh, hop flavor. Like, man, this is as old school West Coast as it gets. Grapefruit is the dominant flavor in terms of hops otherwise. Like it's like grapefruit pine, it's like really, really like resiny. It's so resiny, like really bitter, dry. It has a very, like this is a bit lighter in the mouthfeel. It's like lightly velvety. This, or not velvety, just light and like a little bit spritzy. This is like light, lighter as well, but more velvety. It's slightly, slightly oily actually, like hop oil. Wow, it's a bitter beer. Holy crap. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> it's so fun. Slightly earthy as well. Floral too, actually. What did they say themselves? Pine, floral, ripe fruits, yeah. I'll say it's more grapefruit. This is like more sweet citrus. Like so much like pink grapefruit and like grapefruit pith and rind and peel. That was fun. That was fun. I will say, I think I actually prefer Soul Style a bit more just because this has more fruitiness. So what I love with the West Coast IPA, like this is how it originally was. And then it morphed into the more fruity stuff with the mergers of like Alpine and, and Beechwood and all this stuff. So this is maybe to more, more towards what I'd call a Beechwood IPA, West Coast IPA, where it's like more like fruit focused. Yeah, much more bright and singing like really sweet citrusy, like, also, what like Stone started to change it up, like when they started, like did the tenth anniversary ru ruination, Rune ten. That was also like really fruity and like not just like bitter earthy grapefruity. So it's yeah, it's this seems to more like like this is I should have maybe I started with it. No, I don't know, whatever. But it just seems like like classic West Coast IPA the evolution to a more modernized West Coast IPA, and then we have the final one, which is Haze. So. I don't know when they released this either, but this is Tropical DNA, and this is a hazy IPA from <clears throat> from uh, from Green Flash. It's the same date as the the West Coast IPA. It says transport to paradise in each sip. Hazy IPA with tropical fruit and citrus and whatever. I love the artwork on these cans too, but yeah, that bitterness sits for a while. So let's just check quickly and see if. Um, if Tropical DNA has any reference as to what hops they put in. And I could probably find it out on the web shop, uh, web website, but I didn't, so. Uh, here we go. It's fermented with Brux yeast. I haven't heard of that. That's probably for haze, something like that. Citrus Mosaic Simcoe and Lupulin Powder, so. Citrus Mosaic Simcoe is a very classic combo. I mean, this is what you expect when you hear hazy IPA. It's hazy, golden yellow, it's got a white head. I wonder if they have West Coast bitterness on this one. No, holy shit, what a difference. I should have started with this then. 18 IBU, 75 
95. <laughs> Let's check it out. Yeah, okay, it's not as, you know, explosive on the aroma as a lot of the really hype hazy IPAs. It's like, I'm, to me, it's like very citric and lemony. Maybe some pineapples and bright citrus fruits. It smells, yeah, it smells like very restrained, actually, especially compared to the others, which is interesting. Yeah, okay, but it's also just like the bold bitterness and everything, guys. Let's just try it. Cheers. This is going to be a slightly long video, but that's how it is with all this nostalgic banter, guys. Cheers. Much sweeter. Much, much, much sweeter. It definitely, ha it definitely has the, the estuary juice aspect of a... Of a hazy IPA, it's quite all right. Uh, 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 one thing with these bigger sized breweries, I really like is like the profiles are quite nailed and dead on often compared to young new brewers. Uh, this is just lacking what the young brewers do is using like maybe more hops. It can also be the age, of course, but it has like the juicy profile you want, and it doesn't have like hop pellety biting notes because. I get that a lot. I really that's one of the new things that really is for me a big no no in New England IPA for it to be like really good. It it should not have like cloying hop pellety green flavors. I know some people like it, but to me that's like more off flavor like because it's not it doesn't make the beer pleasant to drink. This doesn't have that, but it just lacks in the popping department that all the the you know hype uh, hazy IPAs have. I might actually just like this the least of the bunch. Because it just seems so much more generic. It's got some sweet citrus. It might even have a little bit of a buttery thing going on, like slightly diacetyl-like, interestingly enough. I mean, I wouldn't mind having this as like just a crusher, have a six pack or some shit like that, and just for a party, for the beach, whatever. But if I had to pick between these, i rather, uh, this is my favorite for sure, Soul Style. I didn't expect that, but I would get that, or maybe I would, sh this would be a beer I'd share with people in, in terms of like getting a six pack, just because it's quite cloying. And it's also really, really bitter. So it's not that sessionable. This is a bit more easy going. Yeah, it's very generic. It's got like the juicy, bubble gummy, fruity ester thing going on that you expect from a New England IPA, but it doesn't have like a really singing, popping hop character. And that might be, again, because it's from from uh, yeah the end of February. We're early May now, so, you know, it's over two months. But yeah, there's some sweet citrus. There's a generic bright tropical fruit thing like pineapple, pine uh, passion fruit. But it's, yeah, it's very subdued. Yeah. Favor is definitely soul style. It just reminds me of Beechwood IPA, something like that. It's really drinkable. And has like this like the big time that oily citrus thing. Hmm. This was fun. I actually think they're quite enjoyable beers. I don't think they're mind blowing for their styles. Like I've had definitely had better West Coast IPAs and better New England IPAs, but I think it's quite decent beer. And I bet in the States it's very affordable to get. Um, but I think if I was living in San Diego, I think something like Pizza Port would be some of my go-to uh, local beer. I mean, it's Beachwood is a bit more north, so up near, um, near LA in that area. But I think, yeah, ratings, I'm gonna go straight 90. No, I'm gonna go 92. For soul style, I actually I think that's this is quite nice, and considering the age, it's holding up really well. I'm gonna stick to the straight ninety to the classic for the West Coast IPA. It is what it is. It's just not something I'm gonna be fired up about. I gave it a ninety back in the day, and that's the way I rated back then was a bit more. You know, I thought ninety was a fantastic, amazing beer. I had a different kind of view. Like ninety is very, very good beer, but it's not like amazing. Um, so if I had to like look back and grade it as I would in the day, it would have been around like maybe 88 or something like that. And that's what I want to grade this one, 88. No, 85. It's okay. It's an okay, it's a decent, you know, New England IPA, but it just lacks a lot of what you want from the style otherwise. But what they still, you know, know how to do right is the West Coast. Stuff. So yeah, 92 and 90 for Soul Style and 90 for the 
West Coast IPA N85 for the tropical DNA. So that was fun, guys. This is a long video. I, these You're going to have to get used to that with these fucking nostalgia videos because I end up rambling because it is nostalgic. <laughs> Hopefully you can overcome it and still watch the full video. Uh, if you guys had a chance to try any of these, let me know what you thought of them. They are available right now on Beardome if they haven't sold out already. Uh, this will be released a little bit down the pipeline because my back catalog is humongous because we've had tons of time to film videos and do shares because of the lockdown. So if you guys had a chance to try any of these or recently revisited any of these, let me know what you thought of them. If you have any requests for a classic brewery, classic style, whatever you'd like to see in Throwback Thursday, let me know and we'll get on it. And as always, make sure to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'm going to say cheers. I'm saying cheers in water. What the hell am I doing? Let's grab Soul Side, the one I like the most. Say cheers and see you guys in another Throwback Thursday.